Hello, you are most welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Real Impartation Moment on Tuesday Night Anatomy with Daniel Alcorn. Today's section, I quickly run with you the lumbar plexus. I'll get to know that the lumbar plexus is a plexus of nerves, okay, that emerges from what we call the lumbar segment of the spinal cord. One important thing that you have to know is that these nerves that emerge from this lumbar plexus, okay, they will give that kind of motor as well as, of course, sensory, you know, supply to various structures, of course, in what we call the abdominal region. Not only that, in, of course, the lower limb, as well as, of course, in what we call the external genitalia. So at the end of this section, yes, we should be able to tell, I mean, the various branches of, I mean, the lumbar plexus, the various nerves that are coming from the lumbar plexus, which precise areas are they coming from, whether it's coming from anterior division or the posterior division of the ventral rami of the spinal nerve segment in the lumbar region, we'll be able to know that, as well as, of course, be able to tell the root values of these nerves. Now, in future videos, we'll be going into the individual you know these nerves one after the other after we have looked at this general aspect of it and so without much ado let's set the ball rolling looking at this you know lumbar plexus so there we are schematically okay we have this so it means that if the spinal cord is here yes then what we are saying is that in the lumbar segment we have some nerves emerging from this area but one thing that you have to know is that it's not only coming from what you call the lumbar segment, but of course, the last nerve that will emerge from what you call the thoracic segment, that's T12. Okay, so from T12 all the way to L4, okay, the ventral rami. Now, already I've told you in some of the previous videos that I've done that nerve plexuses, okay, as far as, you know, the nerves emerging from the spinal cord is concerned, yes, we even, the main trunk of the spinal nerve will emerge. And it will divide into what we call the dorsal remus, remi, of course, as well as the anterior remi. Okay, now one thing that we know is that the dorsal or the posterior remi do not form plexuses. It's the ventral remi, okay, which may form plexus. You understand it? And so what we see is that from T12 all the way to L4, ventral remi, ventral primary remi of the spinal nerve segment in the lumbar region, okay, is going to give us this kind of lumbar plexus. Okay, now once it gives us that one, now one thing that we find is that this, I mean, from T12 all the way to L5, they also divide again, okay, into what we call anterior and posterior, you know, divisions. Now that's what I want you to know. The ventral primary rami also divide into what we call anterior and posterior divisions. So they become, you know, that kind of secondary rami coming from it, okay. Now one thing that the first nerve that we want to see, okay, coming from the anterior, you know, division of what you call the ventral rami, remus of, you know, I mean, L1 vertebrae, okay, L1 vertebral level, okay, that one is what we call the iliohypogastric nerve, iliohypogastric, so you can see this nerve from L1 over here, I see iliohypogastric nerve, that's the first one over here, and then below that, I also have ilioinguinal nerve, so it tells me that from L1 ventral remus, okay, coming from the anterior aspect, Okay, what do I see? I see two nerves coming from that kind of L1, you know, ventral remus again, second remus again. That one is the iliohypogastric nerve and of course, ilioinguinal nerve. Yes, we know these guys already. Yeah, they are very important as well as far as, you know, giving motor supply to what we call the internal oblique muscle as well as transversus abdominal muscle mass, giving motor supply to these guys. Okay, so their root value, yeah, both of them will be L1. But above that one, I told you that T12 is even part of it. And T12, what I see is that coming, you know, below rib number 12, I have what you call the subcostal nerve. Okay, coming from the ventral remorse of what you call the T12 nerve. Okay, so I have subcostal nerve. Yes, also going down. Yes, eventually giving, apart from supplying, of course, the trilaminal and trilateral abdominal wall muscles, giving motor supply to them. Okay, talking about, you know, external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis muscles. Yes, it will go on eventually to go into the retreat sheet, goes and supply what you call the medallis muscle. Okay, now 
for these nets i'll take them take you through one after the other and show you the course and of course the eye innovation so that would be later section so i have what you call the ilio hypogastric nerve and of course the ilio inguinal nerve coming from what you call the ventral remorse of what you call the l1 nerve segment now below that i have another nerve which is coming for is the name is genital femoral nerve now for genital femoral nerve, if you look at it closely it's coming from the l1 ventral remorse okay the anterior division actually then of course l2 that is what you call the genital femoral nerve genital femoral nerve okay l1 l2 so it means that at a point this genital femoral nerve have to divide into genital branch and of course the femoral branch okay yes of course genital branch going to supply for instance the cremasteric you know muscle okay then of course the i mean femoral branch going to supply eventually the skin over what you call the femoral triangle for instance okay so that is what we find l1 l2 now the next one is what you call i know I'll, I'll come to that one later the next nerve that i want to talk about will be what you call the obturator nerve now remember i told you that coming from what you call the ventral remorse okay of what you call the spinal nerve segment in the lumbar region from t12 all the way to l4 okay but one thing that we are saying okay is that even when this ventral remorse primary remi okay we have it it's also divides into anterior and posterior you know divisions or remi so one thing is that so far the nerves i've been talking about they are actually coming from what you call let me say the secondary okay ventral remind or anterior division of what you call the ventral primary remorse of the spinal nerve segment over here so that's what i mean so so far the subcostal nerve okay anterior division of what you call the ventral remorse of the primary uh, of the what you call it the the spinal nerve segment in the lumbar region okay subcostal nerve also iliohypogastric ilioinguinal as well as of course the genital femoral nerve they are all coming from what you call the anterior divisions okay and one thing that you have to know is that this genital femoral nerve its root value is l2 l3 as you can see from l2 as well as from l3 the other one which is also coming from what you call the anterior remorse okay of what we call the ventral remorse of this primary remorse of the spinal nerve segment in the lumbar region is what you call the obturator nerve obturator nerve is coming all the way from l2 l3 and of course l4 okay so that is what we see now the reason why i'm stressing this one is that now this obturator nerve is the main nerve in the what we call the uh, which is going to be the main nerve of what you call supplying the medial compartment of the thigh giving more to supply the medial compartment of the thigh okay that is what we see the reason why i'm stressing that these ones are coming from what you call the anterior divisions or the ventral secondary rami of what we call the primary remorse of the of the spinal nerve segment the lumbar region is that now this same obturator nerve we are saying its root value is l2 to l4 but we also have what you call the femoral nerve l2 to l4 but one thing that you have to know is that for femoral nerve is coming from the posterior or the dorsal secondary rami of what we call the primary remorse primary ventral remorse of what we call the spinal nerve segment in the lumbar region okay so that is the distinction you have to know that this one is coming from the anterior secondary remorse and this one is coming from the posterior secondary remorse that's the femoral nerve femoral nerve okay also coming from l2 l3 and l4 and this femoral nerve is the main nerve okay which is going to give more to supply to what we call the anterior compartment of the thigh okay that is one thing i want you to know now having mentioned obturator nerve then one thing comes into mind in about 30 percent of the population we find what we call the accessory obturator nerve accessory obturator nerve okay which will also augment the function of this obturator nerve and this accessory obturator nerve as you can see is coming from also this kind because of course obturator nerve is coming from what we call the secondary ventral remorse or ventral branch okay anterior branch of what you call the spinal nerve segment over here okay then it makes sense that accessory obturator nerve will also be coming from what we call the ventral remorse okay anterior aspect of what you call the primary remorse of the uh, spinal nerve segment in this region and so the root value of accessory obturator nerve, yes, is from L3 and of course L4, okay, segment. That's what we see. Now, one important nerve, which of course we have to make mention, is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. 
Now, one thing that you have to know is that we have what you call medial and intermediate cutaneous nerves of the thigh coming from, of course, the femoral nerve. So it makes sense that the same lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, yes, will be emerging from some region closer to where this femoral nerve will be coming. It means that as far as, you know, posterior and anterior second rima are concerned, then what is happening is that this lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh will be emerging from the posterior cutane, uh, I mean, secondary remorse of the spinal nerve segment, okay, in the lumbar region. And that is why, yes, of course, it's also going to be in this region. And its root value, as you can clearly see, is coming from L2 and, of course, L3, you know, spinal nerve segments, okay? So that is, I mean, what I have to tell you over here. So these are the nerves that we call them the lumbar plexus. It belong to the lumbar plexus. So what have we seen? The subcostal nerve, iliohypo, subcostal nerve from T12, okay? Iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal, okay, from L1. Genital femoral nerve, L1, L2, yes, of course, lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, that's L2, L3, femoral nerve, L2, all the way to L4, of course, obturator nerve, L2, all the way to L4, but I've already told you the distinction, as well as, of course, in about 30% of the population, accessory obturator nerve. Now, having seen these nerves, of course, in the lumbar region, then it makes sense that we should be able to, you know, identify them. So in real time sections, sometimes you may be seeing the nerves, that kind of puzzling nerves around. But one important thing that you have to know is that just locate. If it is the subcostal nerve, just locate rib number 12. And once you can identify rib number 12, that nerve which emerges below from rib number 12 becomes your subcostal nerve. Okay, so that is the subcostal nerve. Okay, then the next one, the next nerve, okay, which we want to see this time, imagine. Now, one important thing that we find with these nerves is that they emerge between, you know, now, if you look at this one, you can see this is the swast major muscle and we have what we call the quadratus lamborum muscle. Okay, from the upper aspect, between the quadratus lamborum muscle and the swast major muscle, below rib number 12, I see the subcostal nerve. After all, we know that this, I mean, quadratus lamborum, yes, has attachment, okay, to what we call the rib number 12. Okay, that's what we see. And then, from the lower level between this same swast major muscle and of course quadratus lamborum muscle, I have what you call the L1, you know, ventral remus, the nerve that is emerging from there. And that is what we call the iliohypogastric, okay, as well as of course ilioinguinal, iliohypogastric above, ilioinguinal below, okay, that is what we see. Then if I go even further downwards, okay, I see this nerve which will also be imagined. Okay, between, of course, the swass major at a lower lower level, actually, between swass major muscle and the lower aspect of the fibers of what you call the quadratus lamborum muscle, okay, and run on the crest, yes, of what you call the, I mean, on the iliac crest, actually, this nerve, okay, is what you call the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Okay, that is what you see. Eventually, it goes, it goes around below what we call this inguinal ligament, which, of course, it can be sometimes be compressed over there, leading to what we call marigia parasthetica. Yes, yeah, so that is one thing that you have to know. This is the nerve which is involved in marigia parasthetica. Okay, so that is what you call the lateral, you know, uh, cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Okay, that is what we see. Now, it means that lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is imagined directly from what you call the lumbar plexus. Those ones which are indirectly derived over there, which are branches of what you call the femoral nerve, those ones, yes, they are the medial and intermediate cutaneous nerves of the thigh. Okay, now once and what do I see again? I see that in this iliac fossa, I see this muscle over here, that is iliacus muscle. I also see the swast major muscle going downwards. So it means that there's another nerve, a very the thickest nerve, okay, the largest nerve of the lumbar plexus, as you can see over here from this section. You see that is this nerve, the femoral nerve. And the femoral nerve is imagined through, of course, iliacus muscle and, of course, swast major muscle. So it means that essentially it's imagined what we call lateral to what we call swast major muscle. Then I have to quickly tell you that the nest, the muscle which is emerging from the medial aspect of what we call the swass major muscle, okay, is the, I mean, the muscle of the medial compartment of the thigh. That is the obturator nerve. Already we know that femoral nerve is the muscle of what we call the lateral, sorry, anterior compartment of the thigh. Okay, so the muscle of the medial compartment of the thigh, yes, imagine medial to swass major muscle, is what we call the obturator nerve. Okay, I already told you that obturator nerve and, um, of course, femoral nerve will have the same, 
you know root values l2 to l4 okay with that distinction whether it's coming from the secondary i mean ventral remorse that is in the case of obturator nerve or secondary dorsal remorse that is means it's coming from i mean it's, it's the one where is the femoral nerve okay now having seen that then the next nerve which you have to know which pierces okay this swast major muscle okay is what we call the genital femoral nerve and my friends, the genital femoral nerve eventually divides into two. It will have a genital branch and, of course, a femoral branch. Yes, okay, that is what, I mean, we are going to see. So, in summary, what have we seen? We've seen that. We've seen the subcostal nerve already. Okay. Then one other nerve which emerges from the L1 segment, that is iliohypogastric nerve. And for iliohypogastric nerve, yes, it continuous innervation, the posterior lateral aspect of the gluteal region, as well as of course the pelvic region. It will give that kind of you know cutaneous sensation over there. Not only that, it also giving motor supply alongside ilioinguinal nerve. Okay, this I mean I mean ilio sorry inguin uh, internal oblique muscle, as well as of course transversus abdominal muscle, not external oblique. You have to bear in mind okay of that one. And of course, this ilioinguinal, yes, what it's doing is that it's also giving cutaneous supply to the upper medial aspect of the thigh. Of course, as well as, you know, the root of the penis, you know, anterior scrotal region. Most PBs in females, and of course, you know, labia majus, you know, of course, females. Okay, so that is, I mean, what we find. Now, the other nerve we've mentioned is the genital femoral nerve, having its root values, L1, L2. Okay, giving cutaneous supply to anterior scrotum, yes, skin of most pubis, labia majus, upper, you know, anterior thigh. And it also gives that kind of in males, it supplies what we call gizmo to supply to the cremasteric, you know, muscle. So that's why the genital femoral nerve may also be referred to as the muscle, uh, you know, uh, for the cremasteric reflex. Then we also have what we call the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. I told you that for intermediate and middle cutaneous nerve of the thigh, they will be coming from the femoral nerve. So there's lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, okay? Root value being L2, L3, okay? And it's going to give cutaneous supply to the anterior and lateral aspects of the thigh, okay? But it doesn't have motor function. At the end of the day, it's a cutaneous nerve. And the next one, okay, is the obturator nerve. And for obturator nerve, yeah, it's going to I mean, L2 to L4, that's the root value, it's going to supply some aspects of the medial aspect of the thigh, cutaneous sensation. But apart from that, is the dominant muscle of the medial compartment of the thigh, giving more to supply over there, obturator stenus, pectineus, you know, all the muscles, gracilis, and what have you. We'll be looking at those ones individually. And then for femoral nerve, yes, root value being L2 to L4. Is going to give continuous sensation to the anterior aspect of the thigh, okay, as well as, of course, you know, gives that kind of saphenous nerve, so it will supply in that area to what you call the medial leg below the ankle, okay, that one all the way to the ball of the grade two, it's going to give that kind of continuous sensation over there. But because the muscle of the medial, sorry, anterior compartment of the thigh, then it will be supplying all those muscles, I mean, iliacus, you know, pectineus. I mean, anterior thigh muscles, sartorius, and what have you, okay? It will be giving that kind of supply to all these ones. All right, I hope you find this meeting helpful. We'll be going into the individual details of these nerves. So make sure you don't, I mean, forget these ones. If not subscribed to the channel, please do so, so that again prompted whenever we begin this. I'm very grateful for your time this evening. Have a good night, all of you, and may the good Lord, richly bless you. Amen.